Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Woodstock Covenant Church Worship Service. Whether you're listening on a CD or watching virtually, wherever you are, may you feel God's perfect peace in your heart and His tender love surrounding your life. Many of us this weekend are celebrating Canada Day. May we always give thanks to God, our Creator, for this beautiful country we are so privileged to live in and for His provisions for us. Come. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our wonderful God. Worship comes from Psalm 113. Praise the eternal God. All you who call yourselves children of God, come and praise his name. May God's name be lifted high in the hearts of his people. At all times and in every place, may the name of the Lord be praised.
Together, we bow our heads in prayer. Sovereign God, King of creation, Spirit within us, you are the one who has spread out the expanse of the heavens and dug the depths of the lakes and seas. You are the one who has forested the earth and stocked land and sea with swarms of your creatures. You called human beings forward to bear your image, caring for creation and caring for each other, thriving in the light of your love. We confess to you, Holy God, that we have often spoiled your gifts, abusing creation, ignoring each other, and turning our backs on your love. Because we did not make ourselves, cannot keep ourselves, and can never forgive ourselves, we turn to you, our Creator, Savior, and Keeper. We bring you thanks for Sabbath rest, for a break from work, for this place and these friends, for your word that may be opened and preached into our lives. For your name on the lips of people we respect. We thank you, O oh God, that we may wake refreshed from a night's sleep, alert to the possibilities of a new day, ready for your gifts to find and bless us. We bring you thanks, O oh God, for nourishing food and nourishing friends, for sunny and unspoiled toddlers, and for elderly veterans rich with wisdom. We give you thanks, O oh God, for work to do and energy to do it, for fine arts and fine artists in all their beauty and skill. We give you thanks, O oh God, for sports and games, for patriots and heroes, for wonderful things to read, even on the rainiest Monday morning of our lives. We have reason to thank you, to bless you, and to turn our faces toward the radiance of your love. O oh God, especially for your grace, for your amazing grace, so old, so new, always reminding us of our dependence on you, always healing with your mercy, for your grace we give you thanks, O oh God. Here for our restless world, we pray, in your mercy, cool our hot spots, restrain the lawless, and stimulate the imagination of peacemakers. Defend the weak heal the sick, and send forth prophets who preach good news to the poor. We pray, O God, for the church across the world. Revive the church, O God, and make us strong, so that we may serve your purposes and, luster to your, and add luster to your reputation and bring joy into all the precincts of heaven. O Spirit of Christ, give us a joy that outlasts our sorrows. Give us a hope stronger than the despair of our discouragement and give us a new belief that we have reason to rejoice and to be glad for who we are because you made us and gave us life and all that we have is a gift from you. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As we now turn to God's Word and uh, to the meditation on that Word, I just invite you to take a moment with me and to uh, offer God a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just ask for your blessing again this morning on the reading of your Word. We ask, Lord, that your Spirit would enter into this time, that you would fill us with your grace and, and impart to us your wisdom. Heavenly Father, bless your servant and the meditation that he, that he offers. We ask, Lord, that you would just grant to us uh, your nearness and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture passage that I'll be reading for you today is from Psalm 113. And there it says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes, and with the princes of his people, he settles 
the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of her children. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I chose Psalm 113 for our meditation today because I personally feel like I sometimes need something that just picks up my level of joy. Like everyone else, uh, we're, we're coping with the dynamics of, of life that's all around us. Uh, and at least for me, and I, I'm sure that it is that way for many of you as well, that there is something that just seems to be out of sorts, uh, it, it lacking that sense of joy. And whenever I start to feel down, one of the things that, that seems to get that blood flowing again, that, that somehow just brings sunshine into my day, is music. Music's one of those therapeutic tools that we have at our fingertips and that, that just allows us to, to feel good. I mean, even when you're feeling down, singing the blues can be a stress reliever. And, and of course, if you're happy, well, uh, then the best way is just to let a song get it out. Music is, is a companion. It, it, it's a healer. It's, it, it's a friend. I, I like to watch shows like, like Idol and, and American, America's Got Talent, um, The Voice. And, and one of the phrases that you often hear from contestants, uh, the especially the ones that have, in their younger years, they've gone through some kind of uh, trauma, uh, some low self-esteem, and things that they will sometimes say is that it was music that saved them. And that could have been either by playing music or by singing music, or just simply by listening to it. Uh, play, music has that quality that just seems to soothe and to touch the heart. Now, again, in our world, when there is so much depressing news out there from, from viruses to natural disasters and, and violence and racial tension like we heard it, uh, about this week, and then on top of that, there are personal disappointments that we face, struggles that we go through. I mean, we're all needing those songs to sing. We need that little bit of music in our hearts to encourage us and to pick us up. But we don't need songs that are empty. We don't need songs with lyrics that only echo our feelings. We need a song that, that, that does connect to us, one that connects to our hope and gives us a song of assurance. And that's exactly what Psalm 113 is for us. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you open up a Bible, that the Psalms seem to be right in the very center of the Bible. And you can see that by the Bible right here uh, in our pulpit today, uh, where I've opened it to Psalm 113. Uh, songs of worship, songs of, of praise, songs of lament, songs of prayer, and they're all in the very center of God's Word. And I just thought that, that was an interesting note. But Psalm 113 is a song of praise. In fact, it, it, it truly encapsulated, it's surrounded by that phrase beginning and ending with the words, Praise the Lord! Not only do these words set a tone for the singer to find a joyful thoughts and to be lifted up, but it also immediately, doesn't it, turn our eyes towards heaven to, to look at the blessings that we have, to the things that we're longing for, our hopes, our dreams that we're aspiring to. And then it helps us to, to turn to the one who supplies all of our needs. And in turn, what it does is invites us to offer thanks, to give him worship, to give him praise. It, it creates that sense of, of fellowship, that sense of communion. And when we do that, it really is hard to stay in a dark mood, don't we? I mean, we, yes, when we focus on our needs, when we focus on all the struggles that are around us, what it does, it does cause us to become discouraged. It does bring our spirits down. Focusing on ourselves always turns us 
inward. But a song like Psalm 113, along with many others that we find in the scripture as well, immediately they open our eyes to a much bigger picture, to a much grander vision, turning us to the God who created all of life, who cares, who protects everything that he has made. And, and this song, with, with just simple words, invites us into a space where right away we're no longer alone, you're no longer disconnected, you can't feel down as it rings out and shouts, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised now and forevermore. I mean, you just can't read those words, can you? You can't sing those words and, 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 and as you, without feeling the stress, just immediately begin to lift off of our spirits, dissipating into thin air. And as it does that, there's a couple of things that just immediately begin to happen. The first one is that, that you have a brighter attitude, that things for you begin to feel lighter. You begin to experience more joy. But then secondly, what also happens is that there becomes this, this connection of worship to the living God. Giving glory to Him. The glory that He is due and which pleases him and brings joy to him as well. I mean, and all of us need those kind of affirmations in life, don't we? I mean, we all love it when we are recognized for our value and, and, and for our worth. And that, of course, I think comes from being connected to God, being created in his image, as he also longs for praise and for worship. In fact, he's actually commanded us to do that, to love him, to keep his commandments in worship to him. And who's got the most reason to do exactly that? Our believers, his children. Those who are redeemed by his grace, those who are redeemed by his mercy. Those that are his family, one with him, connected with him in body and in spirit. And he just loves it when he hears those songs of praise rising from our voices, praise the Lord. And not only does he enjoy earthly praises, but the psalm also says he loves the heavenly praises as well. O oh, servants of the Lord, praise his name. And who are those servants? Well, I, I do believe that he's referring to angels living in glory with him. Those who bring him perfect praise. And they do that so much better than we do here on earth. And they couple that and join that with the saints that are now in glory. Those that came before us but that have gone home. And, and then it's also anticipating those that are yet to come. You and I, for example, but even generations to follow. From generation to generation, Psalm 113 calls out a song of praise that is a never-ending song of praise and of worship. And at the very heart of this psalm is the Lordship of Christ. At the very heart is this proclamation of the ruler of heaven and earth declaring that he has all authority, all power over every aspect of existence and he has that now and forever. Which offers us who are living in this, in this broken world a strong sense of hope, doesn't it? I actually had a phone call this week. Someone uh, uh, gave me a call and wanted to talk about faith. And the comment that she made to me was that our world today belongs to Satan. That Satan is, in fact, in control of the world. And she cited uh, some of the things that were happening, some of the aspects of our broken world that we're facing today. But then she came along and she did offer uh, some hope and said, but in the last day, Christ will come. He will come again and then, then he will rule 
and Satan will be defeated. Now I guess at, at some level there was a little bit of hope in that, but it's, that's not something that gives me a, a whole lot of joy right now. To think that I'm living in a world that is, is totally corrupted, owned and controlled by an evil presence, and that there isn't any relief in this world, not until Christ comes again. And so that's really saying that what we're facing, injustice, um, violence, racism, uh, disasters that are happening around the world, this pandemic virus, that those things own the world. And they can't be stopped. In fact, what she's telling me is that there is no goodness in the world in any of these areas. And for me, that's totally depressing. But Psalm 113 tells me just the opposite. And we need that. We need hope. We need assurance. We're not living in a world that is lost. We're living in a world that has been redeemed. It's been brought into victory. And Psalm 113 is declaring that loud and clear. It says, the Lord exalts over all nations. His glory is above all the heavens. He reigns in every corner of the universe. Not one day. But now, and there is nothing that is hidden from him. He sees everything from the rising sun to the setting of the same. And everywhere praise is ringing out. Praises are rising both now and forevermore. So you see, when our focus is on God, when our focus remains on on God, who is in control, that gives us faith and a faith of confidence. And, and when we receive that, it also makes us, also, doesn't it, feel more confident since we too belong to Him. Although He's now enthroned in glory, we do know that by His Holy Spirit that He is with us, that He's present with us in our world today, that He's looking down on us, sees everything that's going on, feels our pain, is acquainted with our suffering, experiences our brokenness. And yes, it does exist all around us. It's alive, it's, it's there, but it's not in control. It is our God who is in control. He is active and offering victory for all who call on Him. And He answers. I mean, that's what this song too so powerfully expresses for us. That He raises the poor, He lifts the needy. And, and in those just simple few words, he's packed so much of a, a broad spectrum of heartache and of pain that he is addressing as he raises them up. So what it's really saying is that although he is in the heavenly heights, he's still humbling himself to this very day, stooping down uh, and coming down into these lowly places to help the helpless, to bring honor to the needy. And in the scriptures, we've got examples of, of that even before Jesus came, uh, when, when he took Joseph, for example, takes him out of the pit of death that his brothers had placed him, takes him out of that prison of injustice where Potiphar's wife had placed him and raises him up to be the ruler over Egypt. How he takes this lowly little shepherd boy looking after the flocks of his father and raises him up to be king over Israel, the king of God's people. New Testament, how he took simple individuals, fishermen, tax collectors, doctors, and he turns them into fishers of men and it's on them that Christ builds his church. 
It's, and even today, that same dynamic is still going on. We, we confess that there is nothing so small or insignificant or impossible for God. I mean, that's the hope and declaration also that Psalm 113 offers as the psalmist sings these words. He says, he settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children. And when you hear that line, you, you can't help, can you? But think back to Abraham and Sarah's story. Where Sarah is beyond the years of bearing children, but then becomes the mother of nations. With children, generations, too many to new number. Other examples would be Samson's mother. Hannah's story, the mother of Samuel. Elizabeth, the mother of John, all of them blessed to bring forth life when humanly speaking, according to the scriptures, that that wouldn't have even been possible. And then powerfully declaring that our broken world is not all about evil, but in the midst of that, God reigns. God brings life. God brings hope breaks into a future for a broken world and gives rise to an expression of joy and of praise. And so today, as we, as we listen to the news, as we hear what's happening all around us, as we experience life, I mean, we can still see the, the death number rising, rising as, um, as we feel the impacts of this pandemic virus. And we're saddened by that. And we even feel fear. And then we see violence in our streets. We see a broad reaction to, to an appalling act of, of human discrimination. And we feel anger. And we feel helpless. And we feel fear. And then we look at ourselves and we can also feel our own levels of distrust and with, with what might be unfamiliar to us or outside of our comfort, comfort zones. And we know, that, we know that there is brokenness in this world when we see illness all around us. We feel hopeless when we're in situations that we can't, don't seem to be able to impact, natural disasters that are happening, wars, economic failure, Sickness and death are all around us. And in the midst of that, it is so hard for us to, to keep a positive attitude and to sing these songs of joy and to sing a song of praise. But it also becomes easy then, doesn't it, for us to understand why there are some out there who just don't understand what the victory of the cross brings about. What the power of Christ and his love in this world also does. And what it means when we as believers surrender our lives, surrender our human will to him as he sets us free and says that Satan does not own this world. And that's exactly why we need to sing songs like Psalm 113. We need to sing them loudly. We need to sing them boldly with full bodied voice. With darkness that's all around us, we need to keep our eyes focused on the light that's shining into that darkness. Focusing on the grace and on the mercy and on the gifts of life that we see all around us, shining in the midst of that darkness. And so Psalm 113 is just encouraging us to keep our eyes on Jesus. And then to offer to him songs that are full of praise to the one who is our hope, to the one from whom our joy comes from, the one who not only makes us, but also keeps, all, makes and keeps all of his promises. And as we sing his praises, you will feel your spirits rising. It will give victory over our fears and our darkest moments. So lift up your hearts, lift up your voices from the rising of the sun <coughs> to the setting of the same 
and throughout the night time too. For all things, praise the Lord. And he will come to you in joy. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our closing blessing from number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. In the dark and all alone, growing comfortable. Are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? Buried underneath the lies that you believe Safe and sound, stuck in the ground, too lost to be found You're just asleep And it's time to leave Come on, rise up, take a breath, you're alive now of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus, you're brand new, the power of death couldn't hold you, can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Jesus Christ.
calling us out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise out from the grave like Lazarus. Yeah.